the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation, by testings, by signs and wonders, by war with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord, your God, did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God 
is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him they worshiped, but they died. <coughs> then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Father. I know that uh, we put in the bulletin a handout of the homily. And I would say that I think this week, because it's the Most Holy Trinity, and next week, because it's the Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus, that these might be good to hold on to, to at least reflect with during your week only because it may be hard to follow my train of thought. I'll try to simplify it to the best of my ability, but when I wrote them, one of the words that they said was, Father, you were verbose again. So uh, I had to try to limit that. So that's there for you, okay? And if you're a visitor, you could always go onto our parish website. All of this is there and on our parish Facebook page. Now, today the church celebrates the Most Holy Trinity. And I wanted to approach it from one aspect of the Holy Trinity. Because it's a mystery, and we can reflect upon it for all eternity, of which we will hopefully, pray God, as in heaven. But... The one that I wanted to reflect on, the aspect, is holiness. The holiness of God. The holiness of the Trinity. And to do that, we can look to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, as a starting point. And that selection says this. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now that is not just an Old Testament suggestion. St. Peter, in his first letter, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, again emphasize that. Peter wrote, As he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Peter again, hearkening back to Leviticus, reminds early Christians and us to this day, Be holy for God is holy. Now, if we're going to be something, it would be awfully nice if we knew what it is that we're going to be. Because holiness can sometimes seem like a generic term. God is holy. Well, yes, he is. That's understandable. The church is holy. We speak of the four pillars of the church. One, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. We call Mary. We call the saints holy. We hear people nowadays say, oh, that so-and-so, they're a holy person. What specifically does that mean in relation to the Trinity? <clears throat> so I uh, consulted Pope St. John Paul II, and he provided this definition. Holiness, he wrote, it is absolute separation from all moral evil and the exclusion and radical rejection of sin and at the same time it referring to the trinity being holy is absolute goodness in virtue of that god infinitely good in himself is likewise good in regard to creatures naturally according to the measure of their ontological capacity there you go. You got it. Good definition, right? Don't feel like the Lone Ranger. 
When I first read it, yeah, I had no clue. So I had to take time and stop and really think and reflect about what he was saying. So I'll offer you my Cajun interpretation. All right? Here we go. Now, we say God, the Trinity, is love. We all agree with that. That's a blanket statement. But what exactly does that mean? Look at a couple's marriage vows as an example. When a couple makes the vow to be married, let's say they come to St. Thomas and they make the vow here in front of the altar to God. What do they say? I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. It is a statement of self-giving love. I will love you no matter what. Now, I don't know what the preparation was for the sacrament of matrimony prior to my ordination. But since my ordination, if a young couple or an older couple comes up and they want to be married, they have to fill out a prenuptial investigation. The last four questions begin with the word, do you intend? And that last sentence, although somewhat confusing, is very important. And it says, do you intend to place any reservations to your consent to this marriage. Most couples look at me and say, what does that mean? I said, okay, it's this. Do you intend to tell your spouse, I will marry you only if you keep that job, you buy me a nice house, you stay the same size, especially your weight, you don't lose any hair, you do what I say, and they all looked, gosh, no, Father, no, no. We understand some things will happen. Good. Always remember that. Why? Because the temptation in marriage and in priesthood is the moment we make this public proclamation, we slowly start to pull away from that. We slowly start to become more selfish, not selfless. An example, if I, as a young man, says, you know what, the damn ordained God, I tell you, I love you so much, I'm gonna give you the hour of 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Every morning from 4 a.m. to 6, I am gonna just spend in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Well, about two weeks into it, I said, you know, God, that 4 a.m. stuff is getting mighty early. I got a lot of work on my plate, but let's move it to five, okay, five to six. And then later, hey, you know, God, that, let's do six, possibly to seven, and eventually I can work my way out of it. What have I done? I've started to pull back. That day, oh, God, I'll give you everything. Slowly pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. Married couples do the same. That's a temptation. I'll love you, honey, no matter what. Daggummit, if you'd only learn how to load the dishwasher. And I use that example often because I've seen a fight, a four alarm fire worth of a fight over a dishwasher. Okay? But small things, people start to get mad about and frustrated with because only if you would listen. And then they look toward their children. If only you would mind and behave. They start to slowly pull back. And the temptation gets worse because we can start to get a little lazy. Not sickness, I mean, if a person misses church on Sunday because they're sick or their job, that's one thing. If a person misses because they're totally capable of coming, they just, boy, it's, yeah, it's Sunday and it's a pretty day. I, you know, 
No. Then, wow, what have you done? You're starting to pull back, pull back, pull back. Well, that is totally polar opposite to what God is. God is totally giving of self. The Father loves the Son so much and He loves the Spirit so much, He's going to completely give to the Son and Spirit everything He has. Equal in everything. The Son, the same is said about Him, so also the Spirit. All three persons love completely, perfectly, wholly. They give everything to the other person. And the beauty of it, and I likened it to marriage, is because like in marriage, marriage can be very fruitful. So is the love of the Trinity. It is fruitful. We're here. Creation exists because of the love of the Trinity. That's what Pope St. John Paul was expressing in holiness. First, holiness consists of a complete, total gift of self to the other. But he also said that in God, in the Trinity, no moral evil can exist. Now, if we were to switch the word, and let's say our definition of sin, and we switch it a little bit, turns to the word privation, a lack of something. Let's say we, you know, because sin, people go, oh, sin, duh. let's say we redefine sin as a lack of something good, a privation of something good, a good action. Uh, you might know in your head that uh, shoplifting is a bad thing, but you do it anyway. Therefore, we would say there is a lack of a good action. We okay so far? So if God is whole, perfect, and complete, how could there be privation in God? How can there be a lack of goodness in God? There can't be. He's whole. He's complete. He's perfect. So sin cannot be found where there is complete, total, wholeness, goodness, and love. Sin is always a lack of something, a privation. The small aside. Are we okay so far? All right, here's the smallest eye. Years ago, people started to ask themselves, well, hold it now. If God is in his nature, the Trinity, they're perfect, it's love, it's wholeness, there's no sin, there's no privation, then can humanity be with God in heaven? Humanity is weak. It's flawed. Well, the answer is sure. Yes, of course. Humanity free from sin can reside with God in heaven. Okay. What about humanity with sin? Hmm. What happens then? They thought about it. Greater minds than mine thought about this and said, well, baptism washes away original sin. Ta-da. Now, free from sin, person resides in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but what if a person, they sin after baptism? Reconciliation. Free from all sin, reside perfectly with God in heaven. But what if that person, they don't commit a mortal sin. They, yeah, this is small stuff. Little bitty, little bitty things. And whammo, they get run over by an oxen car. 
Remember back then it was oxen cart, not cars. And they say, well, you see, whoa, that's a good one. Obviously, they have to be free from sin because sin, the privation, cannot exist in heaven. But they didn't do anything deserving of total damnation in hell. So what happens? In greater minds than I looked at sacred <laughs> scripture, looked at the teachings of the very early apostles, and they said, there must be a state where a person can be purified of small sins so they can enter into heaven to be with God who is complete and perfect, all love, where sin cannot exist. So we're going to have to name this state of purification something. The state of purgation, the state of purgatory. It wasn't because some monk was sitting in the, you know, 1200 sitting in his room at night thinking, yeah, I wonder how I could really upset a bunch of people. Didn't happen that way. People were asking questions about God, the nature of the Trinity, and how can sin exist? How is God defined as love? That's where these questions about purgatory or that one theory that Augustine proposed years ago, limbo, those things come out and exist. Are we okay so far? All right. There's your small aside for the day. Now, how can you and I, if love must be total gift of self, and we must imitate God who's a total self-giving love, then, then, then how can we do it? Is it possible? Well, the answer is yes. Very much so. Well, how? The lives of the saints. The lives of men and women who have passed on that we consider saints. Who can show us that what we're asking or what is being asked of us is possible. And the beauty about the lives of the saints, there are a whole lot of saints just like y'all. Men, women, married, single, old, young, employed, not employed, professional, not professional, bishops, religious sisters, popes, religious priests, and a couple of guys like me. But there's a lot out there that you can look at and read and realize holiness, self-giving love is attainable in your state of life, whatever your state is. You can be holy. If I can leave you with one thing from the Feast of the Holy Trinity is that it is very much possible for you to be holy. It is very much an attainable goal. God is never going to ask something that you cannot attain. He doesn't say, be holy by traveling to the moon without a spaceship. That's impossible right now. He says, be holy like I'm holy. Love to the best of your ability like I love. Now that's something all of us can do. Now, mighty God be with you, may bless you. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith, our freedom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God is not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. And amen. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to him in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will be born. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is over and over for God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one of the Holy Catholic and the Solid Church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For our Pope and our Bishop and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our For those who hold public office, <coughs> And those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place of, by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here, present, and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the needs of those in our prayer book, For Julie Tucker, Dorothy Brown, Bill and Edna Adcox, Mrs. Burris and family, Mrs. Ball and family, Mrs. Salvo and family, Jenny Nees, rest in peace, Kathy P. Ryan, Carolyn Elam, Sean Crowley, Maxine Burns Moody, rest in peace, Betty Sue Mays, for Kay Birch, for Marcy and Will, Frank and Sarah, Francis Lewis, Richard Jones, Aubrey Nicholas, Daryl Cobbage, Amanda Groves, Margaret Wagner Groves, and Deborah Otto. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the priests of the Archdiocese of Mobile as they begin their yearly diocesan retreat this week. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the prayer in honor of the most blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end.
God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work with human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Let us Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, in this revelation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, we might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Right. 
resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lay not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the side of peace.
Please join me in reciting the communion chant. It can be found on page 93. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament of the Lord our God bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in you. God. Just a moment of your time before you leave. This coming week, 
the priests of the archdiocese will all be on retreat uh, in Louisiana. Yay. <laughs> but uh, I get good food then. Yeah. But I will be here Monday morning. We'll celebrate Memorial Day Mass here in the church. Then I'll leave and I'll Deacon Bullock will take over Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with communion services. And I will be back on Friday. So know that I will pray for you during the retreat as I ask you to pray for me. Also, you'll, uh, as summer has come upon us, just a reminder, if you're going to be doing any traveling, we now have our uh, ability to tithe toward your Sunday cut offering or even your legacy online through our website and Facebook page. That information is there. So you have that now for you. Okay? And lastly, small aside, but I have to do this. Uh, over the course of the year, We've had the pleasure of having a young lady from Vietnam attend Sarah Lamb High School and participate at St. Thomas, generally singing in the choir on Sunday night before. She just graduated high school and we're returning back to her family in Vietnam. So we would like to thank her, Han, who is in our choir loft right now. Thank you, Han. And since Han's parents are able to communicate with her through social media, and they'll be able to see this mask, just to let them know you have a very lovely daughter who is very polite and well-mannered. She's been an excellent uh, representative of your family. So thank you for that. And to know Han hasn't been flying solo. Okay, y'all didn't get that one. That was quick. <laughs> but she's had the love and support of good families that she stayed with uh, through this program and through this parish who have supported her. So your daughter's been well taken care of and thank you for that opportunity. Okay, <clears throat> y'all have a very nice Memorial Day with your family and friends. You too, Father. Thank y'all. Let us now pray our prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, we are the defend us from battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the sinners of hell. May God rebuke him when he would pray. And you, you who are prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power, rush to the earth, say no in the evil spirits, but wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, your God. Blessed be the Lord's assumption. 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 Bl